Boy, we had a time in school. This school year makes it 10 years that I've been out of high school, and recently, I've been having dreams about it. I remember linking up with Jay during lunch, running to the McDonald's down the street. He will always call me twin because we're both left-handed. We'd be goofing around, blasting Chief Keef, trying to hurry up and get back before the bell rings. Come on, twin. We got to hurry up. You know they be tripping. But when the bell rang in my dream, I realized that I couldn't really see Jay. I could hear him, but he looked a little translucent, like he was an angel. And then I woke up, and I remembered that when I was 16, my mom told me that I had been to more funerals than her. I want us as a community to start normalizing talking about the effects of gun violence. If you look outside the effects that gun violence has created where you don't have to worry about gun violence on a regular basis, you'll realize it's a public epidemic we ignore. Mickey Kendall. In other words, it takes the hood to heal the hood. Those exposed to gun violence are survivors. Moms, dads, siblings, friends, and other family members who have lost someone to gun violence are survivors. It is so hard to focus on your healing or even talk about it when it happens around you every day. Healing this trauma is a collective responsibility, and I believe that people like me have the recipe. Three things I'll never forget are where I came from, where I'm headed, and those I've lost to gun violence. Yes, we can talk about gun laws, police accountability, and prevention and intervention, but let's be honest, we cannot completely stop violence. Gun violence is traumatizing, yet seeking mental health support in general, let alone as a black person, is still stigmatized. And in order to heal, we must address gun violence with a radical approach. And what I mean by that is getting to the root. The trauma of gun violence requires lifelong healing. Community exposure to gun violence is more prominent in black neighborhoods due to the lack of resources relative to survival. These circumstances often lead to dropping out of school, selling drugs, robbing, etc., to make ends meet, as well as to feed and protect the family. Being in grind mode can make someone feel like they have nothing to lose. This happens right here in the black community, and we have to heal from that alone. Black people living below poverty are twice as likely to report serious psychological distress than those living two times over the poverty level. I got my first job when I was 16 across the street from my house. Mostly to buy the latest Jordans, but I really wanted to help my mom out. I worked at the Wendy's on E-Lane, zip code 43227. If you know, you know. One evening, when I was walking to work, I witnessed someone get shot in our parking lot. This was one less person at my high school the following day. We closed for the remainder of the day, but the next day at work, we weren't talking about what we just saw or how it made us feel. At school, they weren't talking about how there was an empty desk and how that made us feel. Why isn't anyone helping us grieve? I know where I come from, we often cope by withdrawing, and we are so apprehensive when it comes to seeking help. I worked at that Wendy's until I left for college, and I walked through that same parking lot every shift. At that point, I was desensitized. Exposure to gun violence can lead to post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, anxiety, lack of emotional development, disassociation, and increased violent activity. See, I know what it's like to go to sleep at night, wondering if everyone was going to be at school the next day, and wondering when they were going to release the names of the homicide victims from last night because they were minors. Addressing the social, emotional, and mental health needs of those exposed to gun violence can be tough. 
as understanding trauma is a complex process. Trauma-informed is a buzzword. Has anyone heard of that? What that really means is being hyper-aware that someone has experienced something very terrible prior to meeting them, and it still may show up in how you interact with them. Grieving is a part of life, and although we cannot change the past or change how we lost someone, what we can do is normalize our experiences and the experiences of others. We need more conscious work, more conscious people in these spaces that actually have the ability to speak to some of the emotional stresses and triggers that arise when you're subjected to gun violence. There is no other way to understand or create a space for healing without experiencing it. Y'all remember my twin, Jay? Well, in 2015, I woke up to a text message that he was killed last night. I spent the next few days crying at work, acting like I had really bad allergies. In 2020, I was in grad school, taking an exam in the middle of the day, and a text message popped up in the corner of my laptop that an ex-boyfriend of mine was shot 11 times. I didn't realize how much my mental health was impacted by these scenarios until I moved away. I didn't know how to handle the news. I found myself being that same girl that I was 10 years ago, terrified, because I still hadn't normalized talking about loss from gun violence. It's traumatizing, and my trauma-informed approach when serving others stems from my lived experiences. Mental health impacts our day-to-day -day lives, our decisions, our reactions, and who we are as people. We cannot continue to let gun violence lower our life expectancy and further tear apart the black community. We need to focus on the whole person of those impacted, and what I mean by that is their well-being. My friend Chelsea and I met when we were 11 years old down the street at Franklin. There have been people who have passed away that we went to school with, and it's sort of become part of our routine to check in with, with each other and send news articles back and forth. Hey, did you hear about what happened to so-and-so? Yeah, that is so sad. I wonder how their mom's doing. And then one day it clicked. And a few years ago, we decided to send out Mother's Day cards and flowers to mothers who have lost children to gun violence. We drive all over the city, door to door and hand deliver them, and the impact has been indescribable. We've shared many conversations, many laughs, and tears with the families, and they often tell us how appreciative they are and how they often feel forgotten about. That's a problem. We need to support these families better, reach out to them, talk to them, see how they're doing, perhaps even conduct food trains around the holidays and birthdays of their lost loved ones. I don't have all the answers, but I know we need to start by acknowledging that they've lost something. I became a social worker because I want to empower change in my community. I am proud to be a product of my environment, and in order to create change, you have to listen to the community. Are you listening to the communities that you're serving? Here's two ways to ensure that you are. Build rapport with them. Talk to them, get to know them, allow them to get to know you. Learn more about the dynamics of their families and their needs so that you're able to address their concerns. Ask them about the changes that they want to see. Examples include preventative measures such as gun control, education, jobs. The list goes on regarding social justice but also post-traumatic experience measures such as bereavement support and overall holistic community wellness in our neighborhoods. This includes mental health, physical health, social health, emotional health, and financial health. The choice is co the communities. We just have to let them know that there are options to this lifelong healing. I want us working in the community who grew up in the inner city to feel confident enough in our abilities to heal and comfortable enough to know that our experiences are enough for us to make changes in our communities. We need to be more vocal. 
more unapologetic, or more vulnerable enough to talk about what needs to be discussed. If we as leaders display that vulnerability, perhaps our neighbors will. Go drop off some food to your neighbor because you know her child was murdered a few weeks ago. Go talk to the kids on the block that are mourning the loss of their homeboy. See if they need anything. Ask them to breathe with you for a moment. We need to stress the importance of life to the youth and allow them to have a vision for their future because it is a privilege where I come from. I graduated from Independence High School, zip code 43232, a few neighborhoods in one space. For our 10-year class reunion, I want to tap back into my dream and celebrate the lives of the people who aren't here anymore and normalize the experiences of me and my classmates by letting them know that it's okay to grieve. Let's show love to their families and friends and create healing circles and just talk. No one is alone. As a community, we can continue to address the underlying inequalities that promote gun violence and the impact that it has on us by continuing to build relationships with our neighbors, our communities, and with organizations that are already doing this work, because we are the community, and it takes the hood to heal the hood. Thank you.